Here we go, our tale of the tape. Galal Yafai, 2-0 with two knockouts. He's 29 years old. He's on the fast track towards a world title, fighting in a 10-rounder, taking on Gohan Garcia, who's two inches taller, but an identical 68-inch reach to Yafai. Barry, you alluded to it earlier. If there is an early flaw in the pro style of Galal Yafai, it's that he does eat some punches. And you can do that at this level against the opponent with just one knockout on his resume. When you get to the higher levels, which it seems like he's being pushed there sooner rather than later, you've got to have a little more head movement, you've got to have a little more defense. You have, but it's almost, it's, left hand. it's almost a puncher's curse, isn't it? The fact that you know you, you have to take punches when you're aggressive at some point. And, they say punches don't have the greatest of chins, but it's not the case. It's just that they're always in the fire line. Because they're always looking to roll forward, they're always looking to commit themselves to their attacks. But I think you're right, yeah, it's only a little adjustment of his height now and again, and, and you know, just moving your head side to side will make your, a big difference. Moving your head and showing a few more angles. Now, Jesse Rodriguez is probably the class right now of 112 pound division, but he shows a whole lot of angles in his fight. He's never really standing in one place for more than a few seconds. Yeah, it's my favorite word in the dictionary, pivot. And the way he pivots around the, around the target, Rodriguez, it's, it's a joy to watch. Yeah, you only really see it at the highest level with Rodriguez, Lomachenko, maybe one or two others. Roman Gonzalez does it. That's a great shot from Rodriguez Garcia. Not any, I don't know that anyone can do what Bam can do at this <laughs> yeah, point. pretty much. And speaking of some lower weight fighters coming up in December, Chris. Chocolatito versus El Gallo Estrada. Yeah, the rubber match between two of the best lighter weight fighters of this generation. Chocolatito certainly has the case to be one of the greatest lighter weight fighters of all time. Those two have had two fights that have been basically rock'em, sock'em, robot. And I think this third one is probably going to be more of the same. Some controversy after that second one. A lot of fans thought Chocolatito edged it. They gave it to El Gallo. So it's one apiece heading into that December 3rd showdown in the desert, Phoenix. Good left hand there from the Afi just a second ago. Punch right through the target. You know, if I'm Rodriguez, I'm targeting that midsection a little bit more of Yafai. Yafai's arm, hands are way up, and he is catching some of those punches, Barry. So you've got to make an adjustment with your Rodriguez and go back downstairs. I think you're right there, but I think he's... Because it's not good work from... Rodriguez, I think because it's relentless, let me get the words out, relentless pressure here from, from Yafai. I think Rodriguez, Rodriguez is trying to catch and counter, which he's doing pretty effectively, to be fair, but just being all hustled here, I feel. High volume from both of these fighters. Good shot. Have you been knighted yet, Barry? <laughs> Not quite. I've been hit with a stick over the shoulder a few times, and that's a pretty similar <laughs> thing, but you know, we're not quite knighted. We need knighting in America. We do. <laughs> I like to be knighted. Well, you know, before the Revolutionary War, you might have had a shot. Sir Mannix doesn't sound right, <laughs> somehow. Sir Mannix. How about Sir Scorecard? <laughs> yeah. Speaking of which, you've been scoring some of these fights, Chris. What's going on? Twitter got to you. You couldn't handle the heat. I've been up and down doing a few different things. So last three fights will be scoring. Have you sensed that Yafai is comfortably ahead in this one? It feels like he's leading this fight. It feels like he's getting the better of most of these rounds. But it's close. It's close. Rodriguez is having a lot of success. Yeah, they're wrongs are two halves, isn't it? You know, this one has been. This one's been a, a solid wrong from the outfit from the offset, I feel. But yeah, I, th I think Gas uh, Rodriguez, I was going to call him Garcia again. Rodriguez starts fast. And then the second half of the round, Yafai's pressure takes over. Rodriguez's only loss was a four round majority decision against Juan Carlos Gonzalez in his third pro fight back in 2018. Just an 18 year old. Nice little cheeky left uppercut just a second to go there from Rodriguez as Yafai came forward a little bit square footed. Yeah, and when you see Yafai come forward, 
he's not throwing as he's coming in. He's kind of charging in yeah. and waiting to throw when he gets in close. I'd like to see him let his hands go as he's coming in. Well, he has the reach, doesn't he? So, you know, and, and you double jab to close the distance, of course, and that will, yeah, you're right, that will help him um, get there quick and safe. I'll tell you what, your fight just doesn't slow down. He is all <laughs> over Rodriguez. You know, we, we keep talking a lot about what Galaga 5 will look like against better competition because that is likely coming in upcoming fights. Better competition is not going to let him walk in like this without eating three, four, five punches. One of the hallmarks of these guys in the smaller weight classes, whether it is Chocolatito or Estrada at 115, Bam Rodriguez, uh, Julio Cesar Martinez at 112, they throw a lot of punches. and. Galal Yafai is going to have to throw more coming in in order to not take them as he's coming in. Yeah, because even if you have a fantastic chin, and even if, even say, Martinez is a big punch that can hurt you, they still have an effect, you know, that every shot, every shot. You no, know, if it doesn't knock you down, it drains your energy. And, and in the end, you take too many shots and, you, and your gas tank's empty and you can't do what he does so well, and that's the pressure. But he is a machine, though. It's, no, this, this is horrible. Yeah. The Rodriguez is coping really well with it. It's got to give him his credit, he, and he, he's been fantastic. But just all the time on your face, he just, he just doesn't go away, does he? Sort of like William Zapata, who we saw yeah. recently, Chris. I don't think anyone. I don't see anyone. Few people in boxing are like William Zapata. <laughs> just overwhelmed Jojo Diaz. You know, I, I don't think this has been a anything close to a stellar performance from Galal Yafai. I do wonder, Barry, what the impact was of his brother coming back to the locker room in rough shape, having to be taken to the hospital yeah. just before he did his ring walk. I think that's a variable in all this. That can mess with your head when you see your brother in that type of condition just before you go into a fight. No, it certainly can, and it, and it might have, but I, I just think this, this is how he fights, you know? I don't, I, I, He's been, he's been, I still think he's been good, but he is hittable. Well, if, if we look at objectively at how Galal Yafai has fought this fight, we think he's winning the fight. But I don't see this fight as a reason to believe he's ready for world-level competition. I think he's going to need maybe more than three or four fights that was suggested that he would need before he gets to the level. Maybe it's four or five, six fights good before shot. he's ready for that title fight. Yeah, yeah I agree with you. Yeah, there was a good shot, one, a really good shot. Yeah, no, I think he is. No, I think, no. The need to rush, and he wants to rush, and his age and his weight will, will dictate that he, he, he can't hang around too long. Good work. I don't see there's being loads of adjustments for Yafa. You know what he does. There's a few little adjustments that, that will make him a much better fighter. I don't think it's an overhaul. And, and, and they're moving ahead. It doesn't have to be big movements. Just little subtle movements will be enough. So it goes the full 10 rounds. Yafai puts his glove towards the sky. He thinks he's got it won. And uh, I believe pretty much everybody in this arena thinks the same thing. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of boxing here in Abu Dhabi, we go to the judges' score totals, and they read as follows. Shemislav Mazelski, 96-94 for Yafai. Gary Kidanowski, 96-95 for Rodriguez. Mike Hale scores this contest 96-95 for your winner by split decision. And still, the WBC International Flyweight Champion, Galal Yafai. Harry, your reaction to that, which was a, a lot closer than I think any of us thought it would be.